Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. In this video I'm going to show you how to get z-scores for um, data that are normally distributed. So as an example I've got here a sample data on weight uh, which I know to be normally distributed. I want to get the z-score. Now to do that you let's recollect what, you, what the z-score is first. The z-score is the z score is equal, you take your score, it's typically denoted by x, subtract from that the population mean, typically denoted by the Greek letter mu, divide it, all that, by the population standard deviation, sigma. Right, so what SPS, SPAS, W is going to do for us is automatically create z's. But only estimates as I'll tell you later on, explain later on. So we go to analyze, descriptive stats, descriptives, take the weight into the variable box and it's looked down here, save standardized values as variables. Click on that, watch what happens to uh, the, the column beside weight. Should we have, we'll see that there's going to be a new column form there. There you go, Z. WGT, so it tells you the, the prefix Z tells you that's the Z score for that variable. There, like that. So we have the Z scores, and the C scores is computed using this formula. However, as I said, it's only a guess because what SPSS does is it uses the the sample mean, not the population mean, and it uses the as if as if it was the population mean because it doesn't know what the population mean is so it uses the sample mean as the best guess and it doesn't use the population standard deviation but uses the sample standard deviation because it doesn't have the value for the population standard deviation All right. so just know that the z-scores are computed using the sample as guesses to the population so you might say to me so what Phil what's the point of getting the z-score for the variable well, let's see what happens to the z-score. Let's look at what happens to the histogram. So we're here, let's go to graphs, legacy dialogues, histogram, histogram of just the of weight first. There you go. You can see that the mean is about 200. That is why this curve is centered around 200. It's got standard deviation 56. Anyway, you can see it's a scale of 0 up to 450, something like that, and that's the interval of weights. Now, let's do the same thing, but for the newly created z-scores. Think about what it's going to look like. Think about what it's going to be centered on. Think about the standard deviation. And then we're going to verify it by doing it. Okay, and, uh, graphs, legacy dialogues, histogram. I reset it, then take the z-weight over to the variable box and press OK. Right, so in comparison, here is this, here it is for the histogram for the, the, the z version. Look at where it's centered on. Before it was centered on 200, it's centered on 0. Is that a surprise to you? No, because you know that the z-scores has mean of 0. How about standard deviation? Look up here, standard deviation 1, exactly. That's not a surprise to you because you know that the z-score always has standard deviation of 1. It's by construction. Mean here, minus 9.16 times e to the minus 16. Basically, it just means it's a very, very, very tiny number close to 0. See, on a scale of minus 4 to plus 4, well, you know weights cannot be negative. Nobody has negative weight. Some people might wish they have negative weight, but uh, no, in general we can't have negative weights. But the z-score can be negative, because here a negative value is not saying that the person has negative weight, it's saying that the z-version is negative. Recall that once we have the z-scores, we can then go and look, use the um, normal standard normal tables to compute probabilities, area to the right of a point or to the left of the point or within an interval. Okay, so that's all I have to say for this video. 
um, z-scores, SPSS gives gives it to you.